Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Welcome to week two of the CSE Mining Over Canada. This week, we will be discovering Ontario. My name is Glenn Jones, President and CEO of DigiGeoData. I will be your captain again as we fly across the province of Ontario. We hope you have enjoyed your stay in the Rouen Naranda Valdor area. Ontario's geology has created a vast selection of metals that were mined or are currently being mined and explored for, including gold, silver, platinum group metals, nickel, copper, lead, zinc, cobalt, molybdenum, diamonds, uranium, rare earths, and iron ore. Ontario has 40 current operating mines, including 20 gold, nine base metals, one platinum group metals, one iron, and nine industrial minerals. It is the largest producer in Canada of gold, nickel, and platinum group metals, and the second largest producer of copper. In 2019, Ontario produced 2.4 million ounces of gold, 42% of the total for Canada. Our flight path today will take us just across the border from Quebec to Kirkland Lake Mining Camp, north up to the Timmins Camp, then heading south over the Shining Tree Galganda area and across to Cobalt. From there, we will head southwest over the Sudbury Mining Area, up along the coast of Lake Superior, over other mining camps including Wawa, Hemlo, and then across to Red Lake. Due to the vastness of Ontario, we will not be able to fly over all the mining camps. So fasten your seatbelts as we begin the next leg of CSE Mining Over Canada. The Kirkland Lake area is where two companies are currently exploring for gold, Mustangle River Resources and North Star Gold Corp. Kirkland Lake has a mining history that stretches well over 100 years. The first gold rush was recorded with claims staked in 1906. In 1908, the property that became the Kerr-Addison mine was staked. The Kerr-Addison mine produced close to 11 million ounces of gold from 1938 until finer closure in 1996. The first gold production from the area was from the Golden Gate Mine in 1910. The next gold rush came a few years later in 1911. This is when the property containing the Wright Hargraves Mine was staked. This mine produced 4.8 million ounces of gold from 1921 before closing in 1965. In the next 20 years, several mines went into production, including the Tech Hughes, Kirkland Lake Gold, Lakeshore, Tough Oaks, and Makassa. The Makassa mine continues producing today. The other producing gold mine is the Young Davidson, just off to the southwest. There are six deposits with compliant gold resources, several with historic resources, and 36 past producing mines. Gold production to the end of 2019 was 41.5 million ounces. Total gold endowment, which includes past and per current production and current resources is 15.7 million ounces. We continue our tour as we head north, just up to the Timmins Mining Camp, one of the most well-known in Canada. Gold was first discovered in 1896 by provincial geologists. This area was known as the Porcupine and the first gold rush started in 1909. This led to the discovery of the big three mines, Dome, Hollinger, and McIntyre, which began production between 1910 and 1912. Several mines began production over the next 30 years, with production peaking in the late 1940s. By the mid-1960s, most of the 45 producing mines had closed. New gold production from 15 mines came on stream during the 1980s. An additional new production continued into the new century with another five mines. The Timmins West mine is the largest of these five. As we drop our altitude, you will be able to see the outlines of some of the open pits and their proximity to Timmin. There are six producing gold mines today and one metal mine, Kid Creek, producing significant zinc, copper, and silver. Gold production to the end of 2019 was 80.4 million ounces. Total gold endowment for the Timmins area is 110.7 million ounces, ranking it as number one in Canada. We head south over to the Shining Tree Galganda area, where I Am Gold has just made a decision to advance their Cote Gold Mine into production. Continuing east takes us over to the historic Cobalt Mining Camp. This was a prolific area for silver and cobalt, which began with a discovery in 1903. At the peak of production, there were 100 operating mines supported by a population of 12,000 people. Cobalt produced 507 million ounces of silver and 25.7 million pounds of cobalt. Many miners and prospectors learned their trade in cobalt and then moved on to discover gold in the Kirkland Lake, Timmins and elsewhere. Cobalt is the only one of three mining camps in Canada to be designated as a National Historic Site. The other two are Dawson City 
in the Yukon in Barkerville in British Columbia. We turn westward as we fly over Sudbury, one of Canada and the world's well-known mining areas. It has been the global contributor of nickel. From this altitude, you can see the outline of the Sudbury Basin. Continuing along the shore of Lake Superior, we pass over the Wawa Mining Camp where Argo Gold has three properties. This area is the home to two producing gold mines, Eagle River and Mishi. We will be passing over another producing mine, Williams, part of the Hemlo Mining Camp. Off to the left is the Lactazil Platinum Gold Platinum Group Metal Mine. Further to the left is another producing gold mine, Rainy River. We now begin our descent into the historic Red Lake area, which is the final stop on this tour. West Red Lake Mines and Argo Gold have properties in this area. The Red Lake Camp is divided into two, Red Lake to the west and Birch Ichi to the east. Red Lake was originally the site of a Hudson's Bay fur trading post from 1790 to 1822. From the mid 1870s to the early 1920s, the quest for furs, then for minerals, brought people to the area. More than 3,000 people converged on Red Lake at the height of the gold rush of 1926. They traveled by dog team or by foot on the frozen rivers and lakes over the 180 mile gold rush trail. In the spring, they used canoes or small boats and before long, airplanes. Eventually, the bush plane came to dominate travel. In 1936, Howie Bay in the heart of Red Lake was the busiest airport in the world as aircraft of all shapes and sizes transported freight and passengers in and out of the area at 15 minute intervals. The first recorded production from the Red Lake area came from the Howie mine, which produced 452,000 ounces of gold until closure in 1957. During the 1930s and 1940s, production peaked with 12 producing mines. Gold mining declined during the next two decades until three new mines opened during the 1960s. They were the H.G. Young, Enco, and Wilmar, producing an aggregate of 161,000 ounces of gold until the last one closed in the 1970s. Two of the mines which started producing in the 1940s, the Campbell and Red Lake mine, remain in production today. Pure Gold is in the final stages of preparing to open a new gold mine. Great Bear Resources has caused a great deal of excitement with the discovery of the new Dixie Zone. Gold production to the end of 2019 was 29.4 million ounces. The total gold endowment for the year ending 2019 was 70 million ounces. DigiGeodata has complete endowment reports available for the areas of Kirkland Lake, Timmins, and Red Lake. If you would like a copy of the reports or an exploration and activity maps of these areas to further explore, send an email to Dan Subtelny or myself at sales at digigeodata.com and we will mail you a complimentary copy. We hope you have enjoyed your flight today. Don't forget to get your tickets for the third segment of the CSE Mining over Canada.